Hey Superstars, this is a little end of year clip show. Normally I'd put this stuff in the December recap, but uh, that's already going to be a very long video with all the people I have to thank for the insane amount of uh, care packages and Christmas cards I've received. And I didn't want to dilute that with this nonsense. So here are some of my top tens for 2020. All right, here are my top 10 favorite purchases this year. Number 10 is my 1912 T207 Ivan Olsen. It's the only pre-war card I was able to buy this year, and it is my first T207. Number nine is my 1954 Bowman Auto Graham. It is the first football card I've bought in a long, long time. Number eight is a 1949 Bowman Lou Boudreaux. I found this at a flea market actually, and it's in really, really nice shape. Number seven, 1959 Topps Destruction Crew. This is one of my favorite cards in the world, and to get it with a Calavito autograph is just amazing. Um, I bought it from Jeremy IPTTM, so thank you, Jeremy. Uh, number six, 1983 Topps Traded Julio Franco Rookie. Um, this card kind of reminded me this year to stay focused and only buy the cards I, I love, and um, this is one of those cards I love. Number five, 1952 Topps Bob Feller. Um, I won a uh, little shopping spree at uh, Triple Play Vintage, actually, and this was one of the cards I picked up. Number four, 1958 Topps Roger Maris Rookie. Um, this one was on my list of goals for 2020 to pick this card up and I was kind of patient and I was waiting for the right card at the right price and this was it and I'm thrilled to have it. Number three, 1953 Topps Satchel Page. This was another one of those cards I picked up at, with my little shopping spree at Triple Play Vintage. I'll probably never be able to afford an Indian Satchel Page card, so this is the next best thing. Speaking of Satchel Page, number two is an original Dick Perez drawing of Satchel Page, and I'm pleased as punch to own that one. And number one is my 1957 Topps Rocky Calavito rookie card. Um, this is another card I was uh, patient with, and I just kind of waited for the right card to come along at the right price. And this one is just absolutely gorgeous, and I love it, love it, love it. And my top 10 favorite projects for this year. Number 10, J.W. Porter tagging out Willie Mays. Um, at the time, I was a little disappointed that he sent back this original ink drawing instead of the copy, but I'm thrilled to have it. He passed away shortly after, so that makes it all the more special. Number nine, Chris Cotteroli. His family reached out to me after finding the video and he really enjoyed it. That was the first time that's ever happened and it was really, really neat for me. He uh, sent back the doodle unsigned because he didn't see it in the envelope and uh, I ended up sending it to his daughter. So it went to a good home. Number eight, Joe Moeller. Mr. Moeller liked the doodle so much that he asked me for more copies and he gave those copies to his family. So that was kind of cool. Number seven, Satchel Page makes another appearance. Uh, this was kind of therapeutic for me. I uh, steer clear of any political talk, but with all the nastiness happening this year, I wanted to create something about a guy who wouldn't have put up with any of it. And I really like how this one came out. Number six, Shane Bieber. Um, In-person events are my favorite, but few and far between this year. And Bieber is a super nice guy, so that was pretty fun. Number five, Blake Jameson. It was fun doing something a little different, and Blake was super gracious about it, and his gold signature was fantastic too. Number four, Bob Feller. I made this one for Milo. I just really like how it came out and I'd love to find some time to do more like this. Number three, the relic contest with Funk and Mess. I was amazed at the amount of weirdos who tried to win a sample of my beard hair.
Number two, Super Joe Charbonneau. Uh, this was my first project with R&J Promotions. Joe was super, super cool, and it was neat to make something for other people to buy, and people actually bought it. And number one, Morgana and Len Barker. I started this in 2019 actually, but it was completed this year. Um, it's my only dual signed art so far and the story behind it is just so stinking cool. And Len Barker was just awesome in person. As far as goals for 2021, I want to have reasonable expectations and uncertain times, so I don't plan on spending a ton. Uh, I guess the only big ticket item I'd be looking out for would be a T206 Napoleon Lajaway. Um, I'm still plugging away at my Indians binders and I keep working on the Don Mossy project and the Alvaro Espinosa project. And I keep plugging away at that uh, Indians autograph collection. As far as channel goals, I'd like to get to a thousand subs. I don't talk about my numbers that often because I try to focus on the content. But uh, a thousand subs and friends would be a really cool milestone for me. Um, but let it be known that I appreciate all of the friends I have right now immensely. Um, I also want to do more celebrity TTMs and I want to do more of the fun projects where I make stuff. Let's see what else. I have done a lot of work for Triple Play Vintage this year as far as logos and things like that and some fun projects for R&J Promotions. I want to keep that up. Um, I was asked to become a co-host on the Autographers Anonymous podcast for some reason and I became a board member for Autographs for a Cure so that's pretty cool. Um, I get that this year was really tough on so many people and um, really it would be hard for me personally to sit up here and complain about how bad 2020 was. Um, none of this would have happened for me. None of this would have happened without your uh, support. And that's not just lip service. Um, uh, much, much, much love for all of you guys. Um, happy New Year and here's to 2021. Thanks, guys. <laughs>